We are going to talk about Kakamega County. Remember, the Standard Chartered Marathon is taking place in Kakamega County on the 28th of October. The governor of Kakamega County is in the studio with us, <laughs> deputy governor, co-governor. He'll tell us which is which. But I have the proverb from Ivory Coast. It's better a bad wife than an empty house. It's better a bad wife than an empty house. Your Excellency Ayub Savula. Good morning. Good morning, my name is Good to have you. And congratulations. Now we are not calling you just Moshimiwa. It's Your Excellency. Your Excellency. Umazoe uh, Ayo. I'm used to another book. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Situation Room. Thank you. Congratulations, first of all, on uh, your ascension to the office of Deputy Governor of Kakamega County. Uh, a lot of work, of course, has gone into that, right? It's true. It's true. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of work has gone into it. When yeah. you hear this proverb, just as we begin, it's from Ivory Coast. They say it's better a bad wife than an empty house. Empty house. What, do you, what, what do you make of it? Do you agree? Um... Better a bad wife than a, an, an empty, empty house. house. Mm. Nah, I better stay alone. <laughs> <than> <laughs> <a> bad wife. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You better be. You know when you're in a relation, mm. um, you have to enjoy life. If you have a bad wife, how how will you enjoy life? You don't have peace of mind. Yeah, you don't have a peace of mind. Mm. Yeah. It's better you stay alone than having a a, a wife who will give you troubles. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You want a smooth relation, mm. a peace of mind. Mm. Yeah? You want comfort. You want comfort. A home who should be your refuge. Yeah. Right. Home. Why, why, you should, why should you have. Uh, uh, well, uh, thank you. It's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Why yeah, should you have a lioness living in your bedroom? I <laughs> 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 I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. Why should you have a lioness living? Okay. And why not? Moshima okay. Savula, <laughs> what is your title? Are you deputy governor or co-governor? Uh, the tit <laughs> my title is specified in the constitution. Mm -hmm. I'm the de deputy governor. All right. But since I was running for governorship position, mm -hmm. then I was withdrawn from the rest through consultation. Mm -hmm. We signed some agreement that... Mm -hmm. um, we signed an agreement uh, between DAP and uh, ODM, mm. Cooperation mm. Agreement, mm. where our governor will be Fernandez Baraza, mm. and I'll be his deputy, and we'll share the government in 50-50. The agreement is there, it's signed. Mm. The agreement was deposited with the Regisor Political Party. The mm. Regisor Political Party wrote back to DAP, admitting the, the agreement. And so far, I've not seen any, any issue with Baraza. So We're no working very well. We are forming a joint government, a government uh, that will work for the people of Kakamega to deliver. Okay. But there is a smooth uh, operator. What does it mean, a joint government? How does this work out exactly? You see, I have my supporters who came from DAP. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was going for the seat, mm -hmm. but as I was going for the seat. Yes. So we merged together under Azimio to form one united front. Front. Ticket. Mm -hmm ticket mm. to win the seat now we have won the seat i have to please my supporters but others to please his supporters mm -hmm. we form a government for the sake of interest mm. the interests are from my brother's camp and my camp okay then when we'll form one government mm. so yeah. what does that mean in decision making in executive orders things like this these will be things that you will do together it's not going to be a matter of the governor baraza has said this and maybe in the absence of baraza then dg savula will take over or how are we saying that there is joint decision making, there is joint execution of office, there is joint everything, whereas deputy governors have often complained in the past that they have no portfolio? Uh, you know, is a government is one. Mm. Mm. There are no two governments according to the constitution. The government is one. But the political parties uh, amendment act that we, we pass in parliament just before the election allowed for the formation of coalitions mm -hmm. and the formation of coalition allow sharing of power just the way Ruto has done he has shared the government with his partners like Ford Kenya where Wetangula has benefited the position of uh, uh, the speaker of national assembly mm -hmm. and has given also been allocated the docket of uh, health CS yeah. Musali has been given uh, an existing position in the constitution with the prime minister Super, uh, super, super prime minister yes. in the constitution, but Ruto actually 
uh, has delivered, uh, has delivered on, the promises. on the promises he made. Mm. I have no problem with Baraza. Mm. In fact, recently we had a meeting mm. and we agreed on uh, two candidates for 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 the position of uh, uh, CC members. Mm. Right. Mm. Uh, and we are working. You're smoothly. working smoothly. Smoothly. You know why we keep asking this? Is um, It's not like the Kericho, Kericho issue. Yeah. What is the Kericho issue? I don't know why the governor and the deputy are fighting. Mm -hmm. Already? You were elected for five years mm. to deliver on the election pledges. Mm. You know, we merged our pledges. Baraza had his own uh, manifesto. I don't my own manifesto. But now we merged together. Yeah? For the sake of the people of Kakamega, mm. I will not engage in any war with my governor. Mm -hmm. I will respect him. We work together. We deliver. Because we are remaining with four, four, four years, mm -hmm. nine months of the election. In the next two years, if we will not have delivered, then the perception will be different. These people don't deserve these seats. They don't deserve so the if election. So you, if you, you want to engage your governor in the battles over these small, small things. Mm -hmm. But what if the governor them? does those small, small things? Let me give you the example. Where we're coming from is this, all right? In 2008, Kofi Annan, we see the steps of Harambe House, the National Peace and Reconciliation Accord, amendment of the Constitution, a position of Prime Minister is created. But the National Reconciliation Act says that there shall be sharing of power. The decisions of the ex executive will be held, will be made in consultation and concurrence between the President and the Prime Minister. If there's no con consultation or concurrence, then that decision does not hold. And we saw various issues where, you know, Kibaki would appoint an attorney general and Raila would say, I was not consulted. And so that doesn't fly. Is it the similar kind of thing that you're saying that all decisions of the county executive of Kakamega will be made in consultation and concurrence between the governor and the deputy governor? I have told you clearly, I have not seen anywhere where Baraza does not consult. Mm. When actually made changes, dropping some uh, cabinet, uh, some uh, members of uh, the cabinet, he did call me before he made the changes. Mm. And specifically, we discussed on one uh, CEC mm. uh, who actually undermined our campaigns. And he said, we can't work with him. Mm. He went ahead to make changes. Uh, the initial changes, the first changes at the, at the uh, cabinet level and some senior officers including the chief officers and actually called me and gave me the reasons mm -hmm. why each and every individual was being removed or transferred to another position. Mm -hmm. The reasons. So the consultation at a very high level. Very good. We are working smoothly with Baraza. Mm. And we are sure of delivering. So, so far, there is good will. So far, we are not the Kericho type. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so far, there's good will. We are not. You're not like very many other deputy governors yes. who don't even feel like they're involved. We were having a conversation here with the chair of the deputy governor's forum, who is a deputy governor of uh, Kajiado County. Yes. And he was carrying on from what the former chairperson of the deputy governor's forum was doing, which is championing that deputy governors should have a distinct portfolio. You're not just a floating deputy governor but you're a deputy governor with some role in the county government do you support that and what kind of role then should deputy governors get you see um you have to amend the constitution to give deputy uh, governors power mm. but the way things stand deputy governor remains a principal assistant to, to the governor to the governor unless assigned other roles but what i would suggest for the deputy governors the little time i've been in office huh? Uh, the relation between me and the governor is cordial, mm. but the relation between uh, the governor and uh, uh, some deputy, go some governors and some deputies, uh, is not cordial. Mm. Uh, so uh, and and uh, and this leaves the gov deputy governors very idle, and uh, you know an idle mind has an evil thinking mm. aspect. Mm. So what needs to be done? Uh, the deputy governors should look for ways. Uh, where they can be appointed as CEC members so that to keep them busy. Mm. You know, an, an idle mind is uh, evil. Mm. <laughs> so you'll start uh, fitting here and there and start undermining your governor. But if you are busy, you'll concentrate on your docket. Mm. So the governor, deputy governor should look for a way that they can be appointed as a, as a, uh, as a CEC. CEC mm. So that they can concentrate on their docket. Are you going to, to be appointed as a CEC? Uh, or would, you, would you think that that would be also good for you to have? Uh, I can't say yes or no. Mm. 
it depends it depends uh, on availability of time on my side okay yeah mm. besides being a deputy governor i'm also a businessman mm. yeah so uh, I look for So if you have time then you could take up minute, the position of CC is that yes. what you're saying? I'm saying if your business is if your business takes you takes your time and you're too busy then you the position of DG you can else. sit to the side. No 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 I'm saying uh, okay. already I'm a businessman mm. and I'm a DG. Mm. Uh, if uh, I can get professional managers to my, manage my business uh, mm. then I can allow myself to be to Which have takes a priority? Which takes priority? The county work which you ask Kenyans essentially to give you in my, terms my, of that position uh, or your business my friend my priority is business what feeds me is business politics uh -huh. politics is just a hobby so then why get involved in it it's a hobby because i want to serve the people as a hobby and when i yes yeah, a hobby when i was a member of parliament in lugari mm. i used to spend the entire salary on funerals alone mm. the budget uh, salary of an mp when i was in parliament was 660. Mm. i used to send every funeral an average of 11,000. 1,000, the representative sent, who, who, who I'm uh, sending to represent me in that funeral. Mm. Then 10,000, a donation to the bereaved family. So if you do calculate 110,000 uh, times average 15 funerals uh, mm. times four, it is 660, my entire salary. Mm. This service to the people. I didn't, I, 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 I didn't join politics to enrich myself. Mm. I was very rich when I was not a, a politician. I was the biggest distributor of sugar in this country. So did you did you represent them in parliament? I represented them did in parliament effectively. In and in fact, I'm mm. the first MP since Lugari constituency was created, mm. since 1964, mm. to be elected for a second term concurrently. Mm. I broke those you jinx broke the in, jinx. 19, in uh, uh, 2017. Uh, 2017 mm. and i got the highest number of votes i was the leading one in western mm. because of what i had done in lugari because people connected with the work people connected with the work i had done yeah i can give you an example mm. i built the third national diploma teacher training college in kenya in lugari the first national diploma teacher training college is kagumo mm. kagumo was built by the founding father of this country president jomo kenyatta the second college is a uh, kibabi national diploma teacher training college mm. that was built by president uh, the late president daniel rodrich mm. mm. the last similar institution in kenya is lugari national diploma teacher training college mm -hmm. which i built uh, as an mp mm. i was not a president okay but all other similar institutions like those ones were built by the president mm. in five years when i was the first time mp i had established three institutions in lugari I built also Lugari KMTC, mm. Kenya Medical Training College. Those institutions in Kakamega County are only two that, that were operating from 2014. One was Kakamega KMTC in Kakamega Town mm. that was built by Jomo Kenyatta. Mm. The last one was Lugari that I built. Mm. Uh, I also built the second national uh, uh, polytechnic in Kakamega County. Mm -hmm. The first one is Sigalagala, and the last one is Maturu National Polytechnic in, in Lugari. Based on that development, mm. they gave me 48,000 votes. Now, number two got 6,000 votes in Did 2017. You, you say, so when you say you built, are you saying of your own, you know, um, of your own, you know, thinking, of your own intuition, of support that came from you? Or are we talking about legislative lobbying then that it's saw not, those funds not legislative for these institutions to then be built? Not legislative voting. Hmm. You plan your CDF. Mm -hmm. And you remember between 20, 2013 and uh, 2015, hmm. MPs, members of parliament were in charge of CDF. Mm. before uh, the activists went to court to challenge the CDF Act. Uh, and actually they won the case, the case that has gone up to Supreme Court, and Supreme Court they have won based on the 2013 uh, CDF Act. Mm. But they, it was amended in 2015 mm. to create national cons uh, national government constituency development fund. Yes. But before when it was CDF, MPs, members of parliament were in charge. Now members of parliament are not in charge of CDF. Mm. Because they do the oversight. They don't mm. even sit in the CDF board. They don't sit in the CDF constituency committees. But I was the patron. 
and I was the leader of CDF. So, so I used had, to budget. Influence. I had influence. Mm. I budgeted for the uh, diploma teacher's training college. We started by uh, uh, carving a piece of land from uh, Makanda Township Primary, uh, Makanda DB Primary. Mm. Then I allocated 10 million for the construction of the college the first year, second year, 10 million. Then I used to allocate 10 million every ward. Would you have been able to do these things without the CDF? No, no, no. It's not possible. Right. It's so, not possible. So the county mechanism, the mechanisms under the county for, uh, infrastructure, then allowed for these things to happen. So one could argue that it's not a mechanism. In the position, it was my idea. Everybody in the position could have done the same thing with just. A why? Why is it that, that in the neighboring idea. Tarbo constituency, where the president comes from, uh, there are no similar colleges like those ones, development mm. to that level, mm. Likuyani constituency, where there was an MP. They don't have a KMTC. So it's a leadership. Yeah, there's a leadership. leadership Where is Malava? Is a neighboring. There's no KMTC. There's no national uh, diploma teacher's training college. There was no national polit polytechnic. The other co constituency, Kimilili, bordering me. Those institutions are not there. Mm -hmm. It's the leadership style. Okay. You empower your people. Right. Yeah. And those, from what, in terms of what you've been able to set up, those are running today. They are running today. Okay. What have you told the people of Kakamega that under your leadership as the deputy governor and Baraza as the governor, what have you told the people of Kakamega will happen? Promises. We heard them flying about during the campaign period. What had you said to the people of Kakamega that under this governorship, this Expect would happen? This Expect the this. Other. There are several issues eh, mm -hmm. that we promised the people of Kakamega, but our priority is Mumia Sugar Company. Mm -hmm. We must do everything possible everything within our means to make mumias up and running mm. if we make mumias a solid idea investment idea up and running eh, will solve first thing the unemployment mm. we will reduce rural urban migration where people come from kakamega to come and seek for jobs here in kawangware in the Australia, area mm. they end up being killed Mm. Instead of reviving Mumia Sugar Company so that we give our people opportunity to work from home. Mumias, you work from your house, you go to Mumia Sugar Company, you go, go back to your house. We improve the economy of Kakamega County. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the only thriving uh, economic activity of Kakamega County is Masinde Melira University. That is what is sustaining the economy of Kakamega mm. County. Mm -hmm. when Mumias, while Mumias is dead. But if we make sure that Mumias is up and running, we will be stable in Kakamega County economically and create jobs for our youth. Well, then secondly, yeah. Mumia Sugar will also pay the county government. Mm -hmm. Says, you remember the law allows the county government to collect cess money from yes. uh, from uh, 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 f from uh, factories, uh, mm. industries uh, within the county, uh, industries within the, uh, the, the the county, and it will help us improve uh, the, the road network. We want to tarmac roads within that county so if we make mumias a thriving industry mm. it will actually improve the economy of kakamega county C can i hold on to that for <laughs> just a minute yes so if this is you know this is the altar upon which you're saying this is one thing that we said we're going to deliver we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people yes. basically being you know engaged in some kind of economic activity what went wrong with mumias and then what do you think that you're going to then be able to fix to make this happen what would you, what was the problem i've always said even if you bring an angel mumia sugar company mm. without changing the attitude of the farmer mm. Mm. you will not succeed because of uh, dr you supply can then you find that you are being owed by the factory mm. Mm. you supply can you don't get payment on time farmers are not being paid they went even for 18 months without being paid mm. So the farmers stopped planting the can. Mm. Mumia Sugar Company is about raw material supply. Mm. If we manage to change the attitude of farmers, we support them with farm input. Mm. We supply them with free fertilizer. We do for them the tilling. We supply them the seed can. Mm. Mm -hmm. Then let them produce can and supply to Mumia Sugar Company. We'll have solved the problem of Mumia Sugar Company. Problem Mumia Sugar Company is not about management. It's about the farmer. Mm. We kill the farmer. Mm. We revive they are to grow associations like Mumia Sugar to grow as association. The farmers' body that helps them make decision on uh, on 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 uh, can production yeah. will be solving the problem. The problem. Sugar. Mm. And um, also, we need to amend the law on the licensing of factories because there are so many mushrooming 
sugar factories mm -hmm. we have west kenya in malava mm. we have butali sugar company in, uh, within malava also there is another factory at tangakona uh, towards busia all these are getting they are came from a small area mm. so if you amend uh, the sugar act uh, now it now it's alpha but we, we have created a sugar act i don't know if the president signed before he retired but mm. we had passed it in parliament mm -hmm. we create zoning the the people living around 50 kilometers radius within west kenya should be allowed to supply their crop to west kenya sugar company right those living 50 kilometers radius around butali sugar company should be allowed to supply their can to butali sugar company mm. that is a contracted can mm. then those living around mumia's 50 kilometers radius around mumia should be allowed now to supply to mumia sugar company without west kenya poaching in mumia sugar company zone mm. without butali poaching in a butali sugar company zone that is for contracted farmers but uh, farmers who don't have contract with those millers uh, those are called private farmers mm. the ones who you, you, who plant cane without signing any contract with any miller mm. you are allowed to take sell whatever they want to any factory of your choice so you allow for free market free market for them but the contracted farmers we must make sure mm. that we cover mm. them around that 50 kilometers radius mm. so that we allow adequate raw material supply to those factories I'd like to actually get to understand what has been done to Mumias because every since the Kibaki years Mumias has been a campaign issue. Money has been uh, dedicated for the revival of Mumias from Kibaki to Uhuru. Now you're talking about all this. The latest one was the issue of privatization and getting a private uh, bidder to come and run Mumias Sugar. It appears as if Mumias, as it currently stands, is a cash cow for several people. And I just want to ask you whether this, you think this is true or you think i'm lying or whether i'm just uh, doing dreaming my own stuff eric i'll agree with you 100 hmm. percent there are cartels in the sugar industry uh who thrives on confusion uh, to enrich themselves hmm. when um when i was agriculture committee chairman i was actually the first chairman of the agriculture committee the national assembly under the new constitution mm -hmm. i led a delegation of mps from western to see President uh, Uhuru, uh, then President, mm. we agreed on a um, uh, revival uh, mechanism of Mumia Sugar Company. One was cash bailout for Mumia Sugar Company. And I remember Uhuru came himself from Mumia Sugar Company and they gave uh, 1.8 or 2, 2 billion cash bailout to Mumia Sugar Company. But the cartels and the managers of Mumia Sugar Company at that time instead of paying farmers to motivate them to go back to crop production huh, they paid suppliers mm. fictitious suppliers <laughs> so the money never reached the farm the farmer didn't get farmer. anything it was painful to the farmers the mm. president has brought money they pay fictitious suppliers who are these cartels and you know everybody talks but, about cartels 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 it's like there's some you say fictitious are they ghosts? ghosts do they exist do they come from the heavens who are they? And, and, and i think that people who practice within these circles know very well who these cartels are but are reluctant to point a finger or to put a gap or to put a stop to these issues and so, for me until and unless they're able to address these issues face to face we're going to be talking about these things for years to come some of the cartels we are dealing with them part of the cartels mm -hmm. we defeated them in the election the recent election mm -hmm. and it was a major major campaign issue during the election mm -hmm. because Part of those cartels uh, are the ones who went to court mm. to stop the new investor from running the company. Mm. And we said, no, we have to fight this cartel. Mumias has to run. Mumias is bigger than an individual in Kakamega County. Mm. Mumias is bigger than those cartels. And you have said our priority is to ensure that uh, we fight these cartels, we remove them from the system of Mumias Sugar Company, so that we can be allowed to have this company up and running. The... Uh, the then deputy president, the current president, mm. actually um, uh, alluded to the fact that when they form the government, uh, they are going to give us, they are going to give the Kakamega County the 24% shares uh, held by the National Treasury in Mumia Sugar Company mm. before it was went under receivership. 
Now once we remove Mumia Sugar Company from receivership, now we will write to the president seeking a meeting with him mm. so that we can get the 24% shares that, that, he promised. that he promised so that the county government, so the county of Kakamega government can be involved in the running mm. of Mumia Sugar Company. And what we will focus on, the county government of Kakamega will appoint the chairman of Mumia Sugar Company. Mm. Yeah. Let's take a break. It's 27 minutes to 10. This is Kenya's biggest conversation. His Excellency Ayub Savula, Baruja Zoya. His Excellency Ayub Savula is the deputy governor of Kakamega County. He's our guest this morning. We're talking about what it's going to take to revive and get Kakamega thriving. Reviving Mumia Sugar, he says, is one of the issues. And also looking at the role of the deputy governor of Kakamega County. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Ayub Savula, the deputy governor of Kakamega County, is still here with us, saying the big issue for his government as the deputy governor and Governor Fernandez Barasa is the revival of Mumia Sugar Company. And seeing that Mumia Sugar then is back online because that provides employment opportunity, that provides revenue for the county government of Kakamega. And of course, it brings back the uh, glory days to Kakamega County. Uh, Mumias has been under for a number of years, for many years. And like you've said, people of Kakamega who were beneficiaries and benefiting from Mumias as employees, as sugarcane outgrowers who are sending their cane there and getting paid and then being able to take their children to school, have suffered. There are people who have benefited from the status quo. You're one of the biggest, like you've said yourself, one of the biggest sugar traders in this country. Are you among those that have been benefiting from the wars at uh, Mumias? Uh, I was a distributor actually for sugar, for Mumias Sugar Company. I was actually benefiting the farmers. Mm. I, I, I purchase the sugar from Mumias Sugar Company cash. I sell. I go and purchase cash. I sell. And uh, in turn, the farmers used to get their money on time but uh, when the cartels interfered with the activities of Mumia Sugar Company Mumia started facing problems mm. and I can tell you some of those cartels actually when Mumia Sugar Company gave farm farmers some loans to 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 till their land mm. a Mumia Sugar Company gave free seed cane Mumia Sugar Company gave a fertilizer on loan that money was supposed to be deducted at the end once the supplies have been made to the factory. Mm -hmm. Once the farmer has delivered the can to the factory. Mm. But the cartels within that zone, other millers, they took advantage of the problem that were at Mumia Sugar Company. They have a can that is contracted to Mumia Sugar Company. They paid the farmers cash. So Mumia was unable even to get the money they invested in there. In the, uh, in the farmer. Okay. In the farmer. Mm. That's why you say when we do zoning for contracted can, mm. we'll save Mumia Sugar Company. Mm. We'll save also West Kenya. We'll also save Butali Sugar. Mm. Then we leave the private uh, uh, farmers, the farmers who have planted their own can, who have used their own investment to supply can to any factory mm. of their choice. And, it, and that, that's going to work. And that is going to work. Mm. And uh, a, a second issue, we also need to carry out a survey before we zone mm. to see if we have enough land within that sugar belt. Mm. Because for something cane growing. Uh, for cane growing. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they ha the, the, the families have subdivided the land into small acreages. Mm. The farm that was supposed to use to product to produce can, so you have to look for elsewhere to get enough land to uh, to plant can. We have to think outside the box. Mm. Currently, even West Kenya is getting their can from uh, Uganda. Mm -hmm. So what benefiting a farmer in Uganda, in Uganda, and not in Kenya. What then the is, other issue what is the is solution to this? Because I mean, you've like you said, it's because families are growing, and there is what how we hold land and how we view land so you want to be given your small portion of land by your parents mm. yes and you subdivide and further subdivision then is eating away of from the um arable land so what is us what's the solution well we change on how we 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 look at the family setup uh, mm. in terms of uh, uh, uh dishing out land to family members uh, 
and um, look for ways we can introduce commercial farming that we set aside huge uh, chunk of land for crop pro uh, for cane production mm. and set aside a small chunk for family maybe to develop the house or what something like that. Mm. but we focus mainly on commercial on commercial mm. allowing cane to be grown on commercial we can even go as far as getting our cane from uh, adc land in in Transoya, mm -hmm. they have huge tracts of land where they are planting maize and maize production, and 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 and, and, and uh, some other land is just idle. Mm -hmm. We can actually lease land from there to supplement the raw material supply to Mumia Sugar Company. If we get enough supplies, then we do also these small uh, 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 holdings in Mumia Sugar mm -hmm. uh, Sugar Belt. We'll get enough supply for raw material to Mumia Sugar Company. Mm -hmm. But the main focus. Mm -hmm. Is the land structure yeah yeah and the support of the farmer and support of the farmer that's not too different from what uh, the what uh, president william ruto is has been saying through his campaigns and then also now in terms of what he wants to do with the hustler fund and then you know the the support of farmers so would you say that you're in line with what he's been saying around the country i've said since i was uh, elected as a deputy governor of kakamega county we have intergovernmental relation between uh, the national government and uh, the county government. Mm. There is no way we can work in isolation as a county government without uh, being close to the, the national. national government. Mm. Because the, the deputy president actually shares the intergovernmental meeting. Mm. The president shares the summit mm. regularly. Mm -hmm. So if the idea floated by the president is supported by the county government of Kakamega mm. for the benefit of the farmer, mm. we'll also support him mm -hmm. will stand by that idea mm -hmm. because all uh, major revenue source of a county government emanates from the national, the national. share mm -hmm. because the uh, on source collection from the county is very little mm -hmm. you cannot do anything with on source collection how much how much was the uh, collection in the last financial year um we are looking at the books huh? mm -hmm. because we have uh, we have told auditors to give us a uh, audited accounts of how much was collected how much was spent so they are yet to give us a report mm -hmm. Because once you take over the new office, you take your time to learn the institution. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've been from uh, Parliament oversight side, mm -hmm. but as has been from uh, the parastatal. Yeah, we have not been in the mainstream ga government. County. So we want to use auditors to give us the figures, and we are calculating now. Mm -hmm. In fact, even we are doing an audit of the pending bills. That we know, actually, if this is air or uh, the supply. What is your there. current bill? How much have you been presented with? Uh, total is about 1.6 billion. Um, that is a recurrent and uh, and and development. Mm. But development is about 600 million. But um, the grey area that has emerged is um, the bill, the pending bill concerning Mumia's uh, level four hospital. Mm. The total cost of uh, that project was 200 million. The contractor has done a variation mm. and he has brought in invoice of 98 million on and above the 200 million budget and the variation law can, cannot allow that the P project violation act you paid between 15 to 25 percent i'm sure this one is mm. above 40 yeah. percent mm. but this one is not even 40 50 percent mm. <laughs> 98 million the total cost of the project is 200 mm. so the governor has insisted and i've supported him we are not going to pay that invoice of 98 million mm. yeah there was also the big project that was started by your predecessor, the uh, governor, level six the level the six level six hospital, hospital. Mm -hmm. huge gigantic eight billion shilling project. Uh, actually, it's almost complete. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Initially, uh, our former governor, when he had been nominated by Rayla Molodinga mm -hmm. to be the uh, designate uh, f uh, CS Finance. Mm. He had proposed to us that he will tra transfer sports, the stadium, to the national government mm. so they, ca they can pump in more money for completion. Then also transfer the level six hospital mm. to the national government so that they can pump in more money to, to, to complete it and equip it to the level six standards. Mm. You know, in Kenya, we have only level six standard. I think Kenyatta National Hospital. Mm -hmm. And maybe Moy and KU. Moy and, and, and KU. That was going to be the fourth one. Mm. 
but in the budget actually they have allocated 500 million for equipping and uh, and uh, finishing so it's going to work so now um, we don't have the possibility of transferring to the national function mm. uh, national government will uh, struggle with it at the county level uh, 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 equip it mm. we bring in doctors from uh, outside the country they so Bula, is this project was this project necessary it sounds it, like you're grappling with something you that know, it's, it's you already don't have there. a choice but to make was it work. necessary it's already there yeah. okay it's the there. baby the baby is there so you can't kill the baby was it necessary whether it was necessary or not you know a baby outside marriage or within marriage <laughs> you have to take care of the baby <laughs> take care of the baby it's there you can't kill the baby it's there <laughs> <laughs> Let's sustain it. The baby is there. <laughs> the baby is there. It's going to cost you a lot of yes. money. If yes. you're talking about, you know, looking at your own sources of revenue, the other things that you need to do in Mumia, supporting the farmers, supporting, you know, um, education in Mumia, supporting all these other projects and putting money into this thing to complete it. What's the, what's the priority? Um, our priority is Mumia's first. Mm. Mm. Then these other things will follow. After we clear the issue of Mumia Sure Company, mm. Then now uh, we start uh, 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 with small health sector. Like the governor visited Matungu um, uh, Health uh, uh, Center. Mm. It's in a pathetic condition. Mm. I was in Malava yesterday, level four hospital, the sub county hospital. Mm. It's in terrible. There are no even drugs. It's a chaotic thing. So the priorities were, um, were wrong, but we are seeing the baby is there. Mm. So, really there. so we can't kill the baby. Because there are other. Uh, projects that uh, have stalled in Kakamega County, mm. and I don't know the planning that was there and um, uh, how much they were uh, they were thinking they will collect so that they can uh, complete this project. There's a stalled milk factory in Malava. Mm -hmm. They just empty land, and they promised the Malava people they are going to construct a milk processing. A milk, uh, Who process promised? Uh, the county government. Okay. It has stalled. Mm -hmm. The land is there. They promised uh, the people of Lugari they are going to construct um, a maize milling plant. Mm -hmm. And they are, their plans were overambitious. Mm. So it, there's it, a it, stalled it, maize milling plant. Uh -huh. There's a stalled milk factory. Milk factory. Milk, milk factory. There's a stalled the stadium. Hospital. There's a stalled stadium. Hospital. And the existing hospitals are dilapidated. Yes. Then there's also a stalled and a dead sugar tea, factory. Factory, tea factory in uh, Shinyalu. If anybody, has inherited, so if anybody has inherited problems, it could be Kakamega, Kakamega County. Kakamega, we, so, we are in, in trouble. Mm. To accomplish this, we need to sit down and think outside the box. Possibly we'll be initiating one project after the other. So, one project. is the focus then, because also everybody is looking towards legacy. It doesn't really matter what it is. You come into a new office and you're thinking, I'm going to be the one like you. Talk of your legacy mm. as MP and the things that you've been able to do that are still running today. But then here you are having inherited, you know, <laughs> that seems to be the buzzword now, but having inherited all these problems, dead this, stalled this, stalled, stalled the other. So is the focus then, because it seems to be, reviving those things we have, uh, resurrecting those things which have died, or you know, starting new projects for you, what would be the best option today? The best option, actually, we should focus on our manifesto first. What we promised the people of Kakamega. What was the, our agenda? Mm. Then these other projects will be completing slowly by slowly as we look for other revenue source mm. where we can get extra money so that we can complete these other stall projects. We've discussed about the Shinyalu Tea Factory. We look for an investor. Uh, we allocate uh, the land to an investor to put up the factory. We look for an investor to put up the Lugari uh, ma maize milling plant. We mm -hmm. look for an investor to do the Malava uh, milk, milk uh, processing plant. Because the county government alone can't constrain budget wise. Mm. Yeah. You know, it sounds to me like it's a long game. It's before. a long game. It's a long shot. And the long game here was yeah. get the county government to start some projects get the shell up to a certain point yes get it to a point where i mean the only way forward is forward mm. and then bringing a private investor to come in to and come take and up, finish, take up yeah. and take up yeah. when a private investor is coming to take up you know it's already a done deal yes. and the private investor then is coming with leverage mm. <laughs> you guys want I to complete this money, project or not then i run it i'm coming to take it at 50 bob when it's worth 150 shillings 
it sounds to me like this is a long protracted game which was just meant to swindle money from taxpayers actually we're in trouble we need uh, to put our act together so that we can complete these tall projects there's a huge task ahead of us huge humongous task. <laughs> what's a mix like in the county assembly in terms of kenya kwanza and uh, azimio uh we have the super majority azimio has a super majority okay yeah out of the 60 uh, elected mcas mm. we have 48 mm. yeah we have super majority so in terms of uh, legislation and passing of the bills you'll have it easy it's a super highway for us i've seen it in the news that yeah. uh, the members of the county assembly have asked the governor and the deputy to work closely with kenya kwanza is there some truth to this uh in terms of what you see we, we also need a strong opposition mm, the assembly work, for work, checks and balances work closely with the uh, william ruto administration we have no problem he's the president mm. once the supreme court uh gave him a clear nod that uh, he's validly elected we have no option because of the intergovernmental relation mm. we are not in parliament where we'll keep on abusing the president we are all in executive we are in the executive at the county level the president is in the executive at national level the executive is responsible for development we have to coordinate between the national and county government mm -hmm. in that essence we must respect the president and work with him mm -hmm. he's a, a, the president at, at the moment mm -hmm. i have no choice but to work with william ruto but in the election i was supporting the azimio mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. but once the supreme court gave the note that mm -hmm. this is a validly elected president mm -hmm. i have no choice but to work with william ruto as the president under the executive Okay. Well, Shimo Savila, there's something that you said earlier, then we, you know, moved on from it a bit. Let's come back as we conclude. Eh? You had said um, you were working very closely with the governor, Fernandez Barasa. Yes. As deputy and, uh, as governor and deputy governor. Yes. You are forming the government together in yes. terms of the members of the CEC. Yes. And the CEOs yes. and the directors. Yes. You are working in consultation. Yes. And then we asked you, would you like to take up a, a role uh, a portfolio in CEC and you said you know you have to balance between your private business and the work that you're doing for the public so in terms of allocating your time how do you see yourself balancing this time is it 70 percent business 30 percent public or how what's the mix gonna look like for yeah. the people of Kakamega to know okay so this is the 20 percent that we are getting from uh Savula this time you know all along huh? my life has been in Nairobi mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been a businessman in Nairobi. Yeah. I worked in Nairobi. I work, oh, I worked in Standard here. <laughs> yep. I have been an MP in Nairobi. Mm. All my work has in, so my establishment is in Nairobi. Mm. So I'm trying to reallocate more time back to Kakamega County. Mm. I don't have a house in Kakamega town. I have to travel from Lugari one hour, 30 minutes to Kakamega town. Mm. Uh, uh, to my office so i'm trying to balance mm. if i'll get enough time i must allocate enough time for the people of kakamega mm. because i'm now in the executive i'm not in oversight mm. so, so you're going to spend I'll, more time i'll have to shift my operation to kakamega mm. kakamega in fact uh, we've told our seniors at uh, the council of governors they must look for a way that governors and deputy governors uh, are hosted in their towns they are they have their residence in the town so that they can have easy easy uh, uh, time to work for the people is there no official residence for the governor in kakamega you see there's a circular that stopped uh, a payment of rent for governors and deputy where the previous governors have not built their official residence yeah so barazas lives in his home in matungu about uh, 40 minutes drive mm -hmm to the to his office mm -hmm. i take also one and a half hours drive from lugari to my office mm -hmm. because you're not allowed to rent to rent offices mm -hmm. src does not uh, allow us to do that because they say the previous governors had a deadline to build residence for 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 uh, for governors and deputies mm -hmm. so we are suffering so we need to look into ways that you can convince the src to allow us have rented uh, facilities in Kakamega town mm. that we 
can reach the office as quick as possible to serve our people of Kakamega. Okay. Asante sana mwishimu for coming. Thank you so There's much. a lot that we need to talk about and you know, keep getting to have this conversation so even the people of Kakamega who are watching and listening to you this morning can understand this is the work that's being done by our government. Yes. The people that we put into office. They need a lot of assurances like you're saying. There's a lot of a mess that you've inherited but you've got to work on this mess. But you've got to explain to the people that this is the mess we inherited. That is true. Yes.